Welcome back, my fellow to begin. Stu Oxygen not included. So in the last episode here, we were able to get out into space and explore all the way out here. That gave us the Gilded Asteroid Field, which is awesome because now we're going to have fullerene, which means we can have super coolant. Mm, what can we do with super coolant? Liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen, baby. That's right. So that's what I'm going to start to build up here today. Hopefully. <laughs> we'll see. Also, a couple of updates from the last video. There was a couple things I didn't do all uh, too correctly here. But inside of here, I guess you can actually go ahead and filter out what comes out of the gas output fitting, which actually makes this quite a bit easier. So I will go ahead and rework this plumbing inside of here so that that is a little bit better. And the other thing that I need to do inside of a rocket like this is, even though it doesn't really make sense to me, I need to put a telescope inside of here. So, uh, the telescope will actually allow the rocket, sorry, wherever that rocket is located, to scan a certain area around it, just like when you put it on a planet. The cardiographic module here only allows you to travel to tiles that haven't been yet revealed. So you still need both of them, which I think is a little bit weird, but mm, whatever. Is what it is. All right, so here we go. We'll just deconstruct all of this. I'm actually going to move this rocket control station. I think I'll just move it right down here. We'll put it right next to the door. All right, so here's what I'm going to do right down here. This will be pretty easy. We'll just go ahead and take whatever gas we find. We'll put it right down here. I'm actually going to change that tile right there. <laughs> what are you doing, me puppet? Hey, deconstruct that, please. Okay, maybe not. Uh, but that's where I'm going to put my sensor. So if I put the sensor right there, I can detect when I don't have the right types of gas, and I can just run this little mini gas pump. So we can use automation to plug all that together. Oh, you know what? I think this is one of the new songs they added to the game. Yeah, sounds a little different. That's nice. All right, I'm going to go ahead and just put in the floor tiles right here because I think I have just enough space for all of that. Which means I'm going to have to move the refrigerator. Yeah, might as well deconstruct this while I'm at it. Let's just go in here and just deconstruct power wires. Priority level 9. Just get rid of all that stuff. And all the automation that I don't need. I think I'm going to have a total of 240 watts inside of here, so... I should be good on power. Not 100% sure if I need to actually put the telescope right next to the window, but in the past, that was important, I think. <laughs> so that's where I'm going to put it. Okay, so that's a 3x3 three three building. We'll put that right here. Mm, by the way, this needs to be a knot. So if I flip that over real quick, put in a knot gate there. Cool. Go down to rocketry, telescope. Put that in there. All right, so for this, we need a gas output. That's gonna be, let's see here, I could put that right there. Star map location sensor? I don't think I've seen that one before. Send a green signal at the chosen star map locations. Let's give that a try. I think I might be able to actually, that seems interesting. Let's pop that down here. And maybe that's to automate this thing. Maybe? I'll plug it in if needed. All right, <clears throat> so one thing that should happen here with this refrigerator it, that has kind of changed, it should have two modes. So it's cooling contents right now and it has 120 watts that it's consuming. And hopefully by the time it gets down to temperature, it actually should reduce the amount of power it's using. So that's another thing that's really handy. Also, this gas output thing right here, that can actually filter, so I can just set that to oxygen. Very nice. I don't have to go and mess around with a bunch of different things. All that's really good. Simplifies things quite a bit. What I'm noticing here <laughs> is that I still have more... I have extra space inside this rocket. That's weird. I don't know what to do with that. So I think I might move this telescope up one, just in case it has an issue being right here. It would also make it in line with this over there, so that looks right. Oh, and since it's three tall, I can put the little Atmo suit there in case I have a, an emergency. Oh, look at this. Send green signal at locations. Oh, in space at this play at the different planets. Hmm. Hmm. 
Hmm, what, what do you use that for? Launching off little payloads or something? Or maybe you control access to the outside? So your duplicate can actually get off the rocket? Maybe not off in other locations? Hmm. Of course, I don't think you'd want to get them to get off in space. That doesn't make sense. I mean, <laughs> maybe not duplicates. Little Kerbal Knots, though, for sure. All right, there we go. Kind of changed things up just a little bit here. So I've got the Atmo suit dock right here. So that's ready to go. Also detecting anything that is not oxygen. And I am pumping that out over here. Oxygen is flowing in here. If it hits the gas vent, awesome. Otherwise, it goes into the Atmo suit. I also have a little light over here just for the rocket control station so that that runs a little bit faster. My dupes can hopefully stay on task. I would like to put a light up here for the telescope, but unless I give up a plant or something, I don't know how I'd make that happen. Hmm, or if I give up the star location sensor here, or maybe, aha, I can shove that in behind the little buddy bud there. Got it. Which means I can do this number and then put the light bulb up there. Of course, how much does that take? How much power? 10 watts? Mm, that should be okay. I have room for a battery here, so I should be good. Except for that's not on the ground. Oh, never mind. That didn't work. Not my buddy, bud. Okay. And you can actually see that all the stuff inside here, the food that's gotten nice and cold, it's down at one degrees Celsius. The power is now down to 20 watts. So it actually makes sense to use refrigerators because they don't consume as much power anymore. That's nice. All right, let me take a look at my dupes here to see which one actually has the skills required to run this telescope here. Astronomy. Hmm. Lerda, do you have astronomy? Yes. Yes, she does. Right there. All right, so what doesn't make sense on this rocket here is the massive drill cone. So we can go ahead and get rid of that. And then just put a normal basic cone on top of that. Give this lots of oxygen. There we go, automatically being filled in by this piping system over here. Awesome. And then I will just set Lerda as the pilot for this rocket, which it should be pretty much ready to go. As long as we actually get a suit inside of here. All right, let's go ahead and load this up and start to reveal some areas here. So, Lerda, you're going to want to load up inside of here. We'll actually just, oh, where do we want to fly out? Let's fly out over, over this way. Set that to crew. Interior building restrictions. Hey, that's a new thing too. Buildings with their access restricted cannot be operated while grounded, though they can still be filled. Oh, hey, that's nice. So I don't have to enable and disable the outhouse all the time. Good deal. You're gonna launch this thing? Acknowledge warnings. Blah. See, Lerda's down here in the little lit workspace. Ha! Plus 15% speed. Very nice. Aha! Uh -huh. And got the telescope in use. Although, it, unfortunately, she doesn't qualify for that motion sensor. I might have to move some stuff around in order to make that work. I think it's possible though. I think I can mirror this. Anyhow, she's out here scanning this up. Oh, she's fast at this too. <laughs> uh oh, I assigned this to be emptied, but no, it doesn't need to be emptied. Sorry, Lerda, you might be, you might have issues here. You can unequip your suit though. There you go, smell flowers, very nice. Let's go ahead and deconstruct this stuff real quick and see if I can flip it. Disable that real quick, Lerda. Try not to get yourself too stuck. Okay, never mind. Go empty the toilet. <laughs> I don't know if you have extra dirt. Uh, yeah, it looks like you do. You're good. What are you doing, Lerda? Oh, magically de deconstructing things from behind a door. Such a very skill. So much skill. Oh, never mind. We're low on dirt. Crap. How the... How'd you build that? All right, there you go. Slap down a compost pile real quick. Build that up, <laughs> and then refill the outhouse. Nah, things are going wrong already, so. If only I'd left well enough alone. <laughs> Learn the amount of work you're getting done through this door is impressive. 
There you go. No? <laughs> Did you just make that compost pile? By staring at it through a door? Excellent. Oh, there's another problem I didn't think about. Crap! Bleach stone. Hope you like stress, Lurda. Oh, come on, Lurda, sleep already. Jeez. Wake up. Wake up, Lurda. You're gonna sleep all cycle. Seriously, still sleeping. There's your dirt, by the way. You wanna go load that up? Yeah, see, there you go. Still out of order? Yeah, six kilograms. Did you just eat your poop, Lurda? I didn't see any food down here. It was a good meal. Ah, oh, delicious. Mmm. All right, we'll rebuild the hand sanitizer. Lerda, come on now. There we go. Finally making some progress here, Lerda. Ah, there we go. Now we're getting somewhere. There we go. Food is now back inside the refrigerator and working on the automation. You're back to it, Lerda. You can get back to work. All that... So we had the little motion sensor right here, just so that we didn't spend quite as much time on the telescope. I don't know if that was worth it, but in the long run, I think it'll pay off. There we go, Lerda. Nice. So now, taking a look around here. Ooh, look at all this stuff that we're going to be able to reveal. Nice. And if we take a look at this rocket here, you should see, oh yeah, range remaining. Should be 20 tiles after that. And we've got a lot of oxygen. Very nice. That's nice. I like this arrangement. All right, so while that's doing all of that, let's come back over here and start to plan out what I'm going to do for liquid oxygen and liquid hydrogen. Uh, in addition, if I really wanted to get more rad bolts out of this thing, I, it seems like the way to do that is to compress nuclear waste. So I might take a look at doing that at some point here. All right, so I'm just gonna plan this out over here. But essentially I have uh, my electrolyzer here, so oxygen and hydrogen will actually flow out of this. And that will interact with the steam turbine to cool it down. Now maybe I want to have two of those. <laughs> yeah, probably. Just for good measure. And to keep things symmetrical. Let's do that. One, two. All right, so I'm going to have two separate chambers. One over here is going to be for liquid oxygen. The other one's going to be for liquid hydrogen. So obviously this stuff needs to be insulated. It's probably the most important bit right there. And I am going to need a lot of ceramic. So let's go ahead and make sure I got that stuff queued up. Build up a lot of kilns up here. Okay, so I'm going to need two tanks. I'll put one over here and the other right there. And this is going to be a large bunker door. That actually means the whole thing's gonna maintain the same temperature there. So that's actually pretty handy. And then I'll start to build insulation stuff up from that. Mm, I'll go with Mavic for, for right now, but I'll probably switch this over to ceramic. All right, so those are what the tanks are gonna look like. This is where the condenser is. So since I'm using this sort of tiles right here, I can make these about as cold as I can get them. And once this liquefies, it'll stop interacting with the tile and therefore just drop right in. Pretty handy to do stuff like that. I actually might move this down a little bit because I'm going to need a little bit more space and that means I can also make the tanks a little bit bigger or if I need to, I can make the condenser a little bit larger. Let's see here. Thinking about doing this number where I have uh, oxygen flowing out over here, which cools this steam turbine. Then the hydrogen that flows out over this side can cool this steam turbine. It might run kind of hot, but these things are made out of steel, so it shouldn't be a problem. Insulated at the top so that the gas doesn't get stuck there. That looks good. That should probably be just closed in. Yeah, I like that arrangement. It looks pretty good. Might be a little bit too big though. So that is 13 tiles tall. Let's see, do I have room for 13 over here? Ah, nope. Might have to scoot it over here or not use that rocket. Dun, dun, dun. All right, so we can gain access to this like that with the ladder and like that, which means we can get on over here. Boom, boom, boom. It's all looking pretty good. Insulate the bottom. That actually makes it 14 tall. All right, so now we need aqua tuners. 
Uh, whoa, whoa, hey, hey. No, no. Priority level one. Don't do it, dupes. Bobble darn. Walk away. Oh, he's not walking away. Oh, no. We might be building this over here. <laughs> All right, so back to what I was talking about here. Aqua tuners. Need to be able to go in, detect that, let it flow out. This is where the super coolant's going to do super cool things. Of course, this needs to be made out of steel. I don't have enough steel at the moment, so these will be just placeholders, which I'm sure I will forget, <laughs> but whatever. And then insulation here. This is definitely going to be ceramic, which I have not queued up just yet. Let's go ahead and do that. Forever. Copy settings. Have at it. All right, Lerda, how are you doing out here? Hmm? Wow, man. You've revealed everything. What do we got here? Ooh, ice asteroid field. Very nice. Rocky asteroid field. That's kind of boring. Organic mass. Kind of boring. Building thing. Woo. How about you fly on over here? All right. So, to make this work and work like I want it to, essentially there's three things I need to do. One, I need to cool down the condensers here. That way, the hydrogen, when it flows over here, it's going to condense and turn into a liquid. Same with the oxygen right on over here. So one of these units is going to be dedicated to just condensing the liquids. The other two are going to be dedicated to keeping it nice and cool. So maintaining the tank temperature. We're going to have that right there, and that right there, and then we're going to head on over here, and this is where we're going to cool this down. So we'll start with the coldest there, and then move up. So at this point I have very, very cold super coolant here, and it will have heated up just a little bit, not too much. So I'll bring that over here, just like this. And then we'll do the exact same thing over there. So that goes up like so. And this is for the oxygen. Since the oxygen gets uh, liquefies at a higher temperature, this should work just fine. And we'll bring that in. Just trying to fix up the pipes a little bit here. Trying not to make it pipe spaghetti this time. Although that's, that's asking a lot. All right, so there we go. That is the super cold line. So that will go out, cold, 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 cold. If it needs to cool down, it comes back, does the same thing. I don't think there's a need for a liquid tank. If so, I could possibly put a liquid tank in line somewhere, like right over here. We'll see if I need it. All right, now for the other one. Go down, up, bridge, and out. So that is really, really cold. Goes on over there, comes out. Let's go down with it so that I don't overlap the liquid there. That could possibly cause an issue, although I don't think, I don't really, don't really think it would. So then let's not worry about it. Let's go over and just do this. Oh, yeah, that'll work. Which goes down, and then there's the right side. Not bad, pretty easy. Actually, I can mirror this and make that even, make it nice and symmetrical. All right, so that's a pretty good general layout of what I'm looking for here. Let me just get a measurement of this. That is 26 by 14. I think one spot I might look to build this is right on over here. Ah. Hey, looks like it could fit there. Ooh, which means I could put solar panels on top of it. And how much power could I get out of that? It would be awesome if this thing would just be self-powered by solar panels. Although, I do have all those shine bugs there. Hmm. Oh, the solar panels look like they would actually fit pretty good up there. I like where this is going. Ooh, hang on, hang on, hang on. <laughs> yes! Oh, yeah, I've got a... Mm-hmm. That's the plan right there. That is the plan. I hope it works. <laughs> Nine... Okay. Get rid of that. Maybe just actually manually get rid of this stuff. <laughs> That's fine. I need to go and do another thing out in space anyhow. So how much distance do we have? Gosh, just 12 tiles here? That's not enough. 
I need more. Oh, that's because I turned those off. That explains why I have so much power. <laughs> Let's crank the power up to max here. I, I need to go out there and get some more... Uh, get the fullerene so I can actually bring it back and do that thing. Uh-oh. What happened here? What's up with this Trailblazer module? Clay? What have I done to your game? I don't know what it is about me and being able to just break software and video games. I don't try to do it. But it's like I find every possible bug there is. <laughs> you know, you can stop working on this one, Joshua. We don't need... No, stop! N what? Uh-oh. What's happening? Cluster map rocket animator. Huh. Okay, well, it's still... <laughs> I'm still making progress, so that's good. So it seems to happen when I click on star map. No, things still seem to be working. Lerda, you doing something to my game? She knows. She's up to something. All right, let's see if I can get construction started here. Oh, no. Ah, there it is. I think I want to build it right about there. Ooh, yeah. So this is going to be all the solar panels right up here. And then on top of that, the batteries. It's going to come down there and it's going to power the whole thing up. Yeah. Real good. Lots of power. Heavy conductive plates. One right here. Or somewhere in there. And then another one right up here. Boop, boop, boop. So we can tie all of that together with big heavy watt wires. Oh, yeah. Now that's real fancy. Ooh. New planetoid detected. Oh, and look at this. All right. Keep moving, alert them. Let's see here. I have 18 tiles of range in this rocket here. This is the one that's going to go out and pick up the fullerene. So if I take a look at the star map here and I figure out how many I need, I think I need a total of 16. Aha. So I have enough to do it. All right. Let's make sure everything inside of here is good to go. Seems like it is. So let me go ahead and get my crew ready. Striker, already ready to go. Good deal. So we'll put the key uh, crew in there. Boom, there we go. And Striker is on his way. You know, it really seems like this rocket over here, how fast Lurda can actually use the telescope and everything. Like, I might as well just let this thing continue to fly around. I mean, she... She uh, reveals area a lot faster than this rocket even moves. So it's almost like not even worth just parking in one spot. Might as well just kind of keep circling the map. And you know what? If I'm just kind of honest with you, I, I think this makes the whole cardiographic module thing here pretty useless. I don't really get the point of that. I'm going to move this rocket real quick here. Meep, you want to jump on in there? That's new. This background is totally different. That's cool. Alright, so I want you to land here. Not just any landing pad. No, you want to go to number three. There you go. Uh, uh, there we go. That should work. Don't stand there! Lilo, that was almost... You almost got squished. Alright, let's continue to plan this out. Running the heavy conductive wires and stuff. Get rid of that insulated tile. Put that right there. Which means I can get rid of that insulated tile. Run the heavy watt wire outside. That way I don't have to worry about the temperature of things. And do this right here. Okay, some other things I need to do here. I've got water that's flowing out of this. Which needs to drain back here. So there's two spots. I can do that. I'll put one... This middle one's going to be running a lot, so I think I'll just actually focus all the water right down there. So that flow in like so, which means this flows out, bridges over, goes over there, that's the liquid vent. 
Yeah, this is coming together pretty good. I like this. Other things I'm going to need. Liquid pumps down here. Those will need automation because they're going to be hooked up to other things that's going to hopefully pump out as much as I need to certain areas. Mm. I'm also going to need other automation inside of here to not fill this up too much. Of course, that stuff's going to need power. So, I can get power in right here and I don't have to worry about the temperature. It's the other side I have to worry about. Over here. I could bridge right here, but that might expose that. Which isn't what I want to have. So, I think I'll actually just run a wire around to the other side. So I'll do it like that. Ho! Oh, another new planetoid. Now this one I like. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> if you can make a base on on this planet over here. Look, you got an interstellar ocean just floating in the sky. Unlimited access to ice, salt water, brine. <laughs> Doesn't even cost you fuel. Who's making a mess? Striker? Are we gonna have to play that game? Yeah, I guess we are. Let's see if you can make a compost pile inside of here. Oh, lucky for you, there's a bunch of useless gas pipes here. There you go. Hey, Lerda. Lerda, I know that you're, you're working the telescope here, but you're scanning everything except for this tile. I want to show people the cool planet. Come on! This is honestly like the one planet I actually want to go to. Hey, there we go. Now I can see the planet. Hey, look at this! Look at all these gassy moos! Look at them all! They're all over the place! I think there's about 30 of them here. Ooh, fancy. So that's why I want to go all the way over there. That would be cool to play with the gassy moos. I've tried to do them in the past, but they haven't really ever worked out. All right. Lerda, it's about time for you to come back. Mm, let's see. You have about 300 kilograms left in the tank. Yeah, so it's probably time for you to fly back. All right, so in one trip, she flew all the way down here and over there and wow, revealed a lot. Yeah, that telescope is far better than the other thing. Uh-oh, who's stress vomiting? Oh, no! Striker! I totally forgot about you and your your needs up here. My bad. Here, you need a compost pile? You want to build one of those real quick? Oh, Striker. I mean, at least it's inside the suit. All right, finally, Strikers made it to the Gilded Asteroid up here and can now start collecting that precious fullerene. Sure does take a long time to get all the way out there. All right, any moment now, Lurda should be arriving. All right, so in just a moment here, Lurda should be coming back from her scouting mission and should land right here. Aha! There she he is. Hello, welcome back. So the cool thing about this is not only do I still have whatever rad bolts I needed inside of there, I can flip this crew to all. She can run out and do whatever she needs to do, go in there and restock everything. And since I've been, I disabled the signal switch here, we can flick that and that'll automatically start to run all of these rad bolts back into the engine. At the same time, you can see that all the carbon dioxide that she had breathed out and some of the polluted oxygen has already been filtered out. Ha! How fancy is that? All right, let's watch this. Boom! Bunch of rad bolts. Nice. Uh, let's go ahead and set those to 50, just for the sake of it, because it's nice and fun to watch. I did set them to 500 to begin with. Yeah. Uh, they're a little bit more efficient when you run them with larger numbers, I guess. Apparently. Because uh, only a certain amount decays as it's moving from one spot to another, so... 
if you run them in larger blocks, I guess you, you get more to the engine, but not a big deal. At least in this case, I think I've got plenty of range. Still have 14 tiles. All I need to do is top this thing up with a little bit of food. And we'll send it right back out. Meanwhile, let's see how we're doing all the way out here. All right, we're doing pretty good. I think we have about another cycle out here, and then we'll be able to come back. Actually, what happened to all your food, bud? Oh no, Striker. <gasps> striker! Well, uh, that's not gonna work. Oh boy, you need to come back, bud. Or at least get off the point. <laughs> well, that's not good. Oh, wait, hang on. We do have polluted water, and we do have dirt. Is it possible that you can refine water? Out here, do you have sand? Uh-oh. Uh, I don't have good news for you, Striker. Uh, <laughs> Uh-oh. It must have gone bad on you. Wake up, Striker. You got stuff to do. <laughs> yeah, I don't think we're going to be... I honestly don't think there's any way you get out of this one, bud. I don't even know what you're doing. Okay, so you're mopping. That's good. Okay, now you need to deconstruct. Uh, work fast, bud. I hope this thing can fly itself back without you. <laughs> oh boy, 260. Uh, yeah, you're not gonna make it. It's, it's just not gonna happen here. <laughs> well, <clears throat> might as well just change things back to normal priority here. Enjoy your last moments, striker. At least get off the point. Oh, yeah, stress vomiting. Hmm. Oh, gosh. And you did. <laughs> hey, look, the rocket's still moving. So the question is do we actually need the duplicate? <laughs> or will this just keep going? I don't know. Switching to autopilot. <laughs> I'm glad it didn't short out with all the vomit you put on it, Striker. Oh my gosh, look at this. What a mess. Oh yeah, see? Still working. What's the point of having a dupe in here? Alright, now hang on, hang on, hang on. Before I go... Yeah, I mean, if this thing is capable of doing its own automation... I mean... If I don't need a dupe, I might as well... Not bring it back too early. I still have a lot of diamonds left on the drill cone. Hey, look at that! It does work! <laughs> <laughs> Who needs a dupe? Okay, one issue I run into here is that this can get a little bit too warm inside here. Yeah, that's it. 40 degrees Celsius. Quite hot. So what I can do, just to cool this down, is I can come in here with a temperature shift plate made of ice. And so long as my dupes actually cooperate and deconstruct. Oh, there. Now you're here. So, come in here like this. Put that temperature shift plate right back there. That'll cool things down real nice. I said disable it. Don't be pooping there. I'll tell you, these dupes, they really want to poop in the outhouse that's in space. There we go. Look at that. Look at how nice and cool everything got. Just let it slosh around for a little bit. Then we'll come back and mop it up. Ah, oh, yeah. Real nice. All right, so Lurda, where do you want to fly out to? This is probably a good spot. There's a lot of stuff up there. And you got a full Radbolt engine. Nice. Matter of fact, what's the radiation look like down here? Oh, hey, look at that. Fancy. Well, I think it's time for a brand new duplicate. Now that we do have a vacancy here. Ooh, who to bring in? Hmm, machinery. Operating speed. I like that. Plus two to piloting. Well, that's awfully convenient. Stress response, ugly crier. Hmm. Roger, welcome to the base. And thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Your skill will be rocketry. 
<laughs> a dangerous job, apparently. <laughs> oh, sorry, Lerda. Totally forgot about all this. Oh, jeez. Well, the temperature's good. <laughs> if you unequip your suit while you're mopping, you automatically mop up the polluted water. Pro hacks. Oh, jeez, another planetoid discovered. Ooh. Hey, guess what? The other rocket finished what it was doing. So we'll send it on back. <laughs> the spirit of Striker. Ooh, wow, that's going to take 11.2 cycles to come all the way back. That is pretty slow. Let's take a look at that other planet here. Ooh, look at this thing. It's got nothing but abyssalite and magma. Well, and some other stuff that's beneath the surface. Very fancy hot planet there. One of the cool things you can see is when you look at the planets here, you can kind of get an idea of what's down there. How about a Niobium Volcano? How about that? All right, going to send Lerda all the way out here just to kind of see what these points are. Those are really, really far away, so might be real good stuff. And you know what? Since I have so many dupes that are flying around, I'm going to go ahead and bring in one more as well. Anagumilus. Welcome to the base. I think that's how you say it. Enogmulus? Enogmulus. Yeah. Thank you so much for being a Patreon supporter. Alright, so I know I've been focusing on the rockets and whatnot, but up here we are continuing to build things. I'm actually working on the power side of this first, just because that's the most useful to me right now. But once I get that stuff up and running, the rest of this seems fairly easy as far as how to construct it. So all I gotta do is just kind of wait for my dupes to finish. That said, with a dupe flying around out in space, kind of looking at things, I can't really just go AFK. Ooh, yes, it was worth coming all the way out here. A radioactive asteroid field. Ooh, I'm gonna go ahead and scan up these last little pieces right there, and then fly on out. Ooh, I hit the jackpot. Radioactive gas cloud. Look at that. Uranium ore, 18%, but it's the only solid there. Yes. Total mass remaining, though, only 7.9 tons. Oh, so I could run a smaller cargo thing all the way out there and pick that up. Yeah. Good deal. Ooh, that's good. Mm -hmm. How is this continuously pumping just a little bit of liquid? Where is it coming from? It's not going away. What? Is my nuclear waste duplicating? I think my nu nuclear waste is duplicating. <laughs> well, that's something. All right. <clears throat> well, look at this. Ooh, power, power, power. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Good stuff right there. If I go out into space here real quick, you can see that, ooh, this rocket is just about back and that will come back with the fullerene on board, which is new. So in about 10 seconds, that'll be back. And it should land right here. Aha, and there we are. Ta-da. Now, are we automatically unloading everything? Oh, yes, we are. Ha-ha! There goes a little bit of regolith. Nice. If I look inside of here, we can see what all we have. We have five tons of gold, uh, two tons of fullerene, we got refined carbon, two tons of that, sedimentary rock, nine tons, and some regolith. So the regolith, gold, mm, and the fullerene are the ones that are actually really useful there. <gasps> There goes Stryker. Look at how happy Lilu is about it. That's messed up, Lilu. <laughs> oh, look, they're all happy. Jeez, what was wrong with you, Stryker? There's a picture of them right there. Bunch of crying dupes. Good for morale. <laughs> uh. Now, who dropped the grub fruit in the nuclear waste? Hmm? Guess we don't gotta worry about germs. Hey! Look who made it back! Lerda's back! Welcome. 
Okay, so inside of here is my fullerene. Now I need to make this into super coolant. And to see just how much we can actually get my, for that giant trip that we made all the way out here and back. I mean, that took forever, but I think that's going to be a trip I have to make quite often. I don't have the fullerene set up to get kicked out of here just yet. We do have table salt all the way down here. This one has not yet been picked here. So let's go ahead and click on fullerene real quick. And there it is. All right, moving down here. We can get to the molecular forge. Yes, super coolant, very nice. So this takes gold, fullerene, and a little bit of petroleum there. So I can get 100 kilograms of super coolant, which when you're looking at a liquid pipe, that is going to actually be 10 segments. So that would equate to that much right there. Whoa, so I actually have a ton of super coolant. All right. All right, so now I need petroleum. Luckily, I have petroleum right here. Okay, one thing I can do just to make this nice and easy, is I'll just go build a tile right here. And then I'll come in here and I will empty out the liquid pipe. So there we go, Meat Puppet is just kicking out a bunch of that petroleum there. Pretty easy. So I should be able to come over here and just make 99 super coolants. There we go. Ooh, fancy. One trip all the way out there and back does allow us to make a lot of super coolant. So even though it's quite the trip to get all the way out there, <laughs> and in this case, it cost me a duplicate, um, it does seem to be worth it, so that's good. Seems like these two locations are prime places to go. This place I should get a lot of uranium because that's just the only thing I'm gonna pick up there. And this place over here, you know, fullerene works out pretty good. The next thing I'm gonna be looking for though is a little bit of niobium. Because if I can get some of that, then I can unlock thermium. All right, well, I've made some good progress here today, getting all the way out there into the star map, exposing new things I think that are going to be super, super useful here. And I'm just going to make a little trip out here just to kind of reveal this area here uh, as we try to build up more and more super coolant so that I can start to get liquid oxygen and hydrogen. That way we can get a little bit faster rocket here and we don't have to wait for all of this nuclear waste stuff. That'll be nice. But at any rate, that's all I got time for today. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little episode here of Oxygen Not Included. Thank you guys for watching. As always, stay awesome, guys. Peace. Brothgar, out.